for some more analysis on Yahoo. We're joined by Laura Martin via Skype from Los Angeles. She's with Needham Company. She's been following Yahoo for a long time. I think the biggest question, Laura, is what kind of grade should we ultimately give Roy Bostock for his time as the chairman of Yahoo? Well, that's a great question, but given how the stock has performed, I'd give him about a D, because anybody D. who was there, it's about a D as in dog. Uh, I think anybody who was there when Microsoft bid $31 and didn't let that transaction happen does not a, deserve a good grade on being a custodian for shareholder value. Uh, let's stay on that for a second. Uh, Laura was covering Yahoo back when Microsoft was offering to buy the company. At the time, you said, if they really reject the offer, they are going to have a litany of shareholder lawsuits. It's clear there are no other bidders for anything close to this price. Laura, they could have used you on the board back then, I think. Yeah, I would have been better than Roy Bostock, as it turned out. <laughs> but I think, you know, one important point is that in these tech companies, talent and talent churn is very expensive. So this is, you know, Roy Bostock churning out is just completely consistent with the kind of turnover we've seen at this company over the last five years. And they brought in Carol, and I think most people would say that Carol was probably not a good choice. I think Scott's unproven, but we've got to give him two or three years. Um, and I think it's interesting because I think that it's, you know, I think Yahoo probably has a lot of value in it, but every time you turn out a CEO, you spend a lot of time turning over people, and that's bad for the value creation. Well, and I don't think it's just the uh, tenure of Carol Bartz. It's also the way she was dismissed uh, via a phone call from Roy Bostock that got so much of the attention. Um, you know, what was your reaction when you first heard that she was going, not in a traditional way, but after being told uh, on the phone by Roy, and then she disseminated that information before the company basically could? Yes, I mean, again, I think you should handle people in a people-driven business better than they've handled um, than they've handled Carol. And I think she is probably, I, I really think that Jack Ma has blood on his hands for Carol because by taking Alipay out of the Chinese assets, it really raised the question by shareholders, you know, where does the buck stop? And, you know, they raised questions about whether we would ever get value for the Chinese assets, you know? So, and that really fell, that blame fell on the CEO, which at the time was Carol. Um, now that we don't know who the chairperson's going to be, and you have a chance to share your ideas on that, I mean, who would be the ideal chair, in your opinion, whether it's an actual person or the characteristics that would make up the next chair of Yahoo? You know, I would like to see a very high integrity guy that has a lot of public board experience and specifically I would say turnaround experience because Yahoo is really in the midst of a turnaround under the public eye. And as you know, turnarounds typically take three to four years and public shareholders want return over three to four quarters. So it's a very difficult endeavor they're, about, they're trying to do here and we see it at AOL because Tim Armstrong is excellent and yet it's just a lot of pressure to put on a CEO to try to turn around a company in less than a year. We gave Carol a little less than two years. Um, I expect we have give Scott Thompson a little less than two years and that's just a hard timing time frame to turn around a company. You talked a little bit about the Asian assets. What Roy Bostock said today about the partial sale or, or sale of the whole company, that they went through that process and they didn't get any attract, attractive offers. But of course, he's saying that after one of their largest shareholders, Dan Loeb, said not too long ago, uh, I don't like that process that you guys are going through to sell a stake in the company. You don't need to do that. Why are you even entertaining that? Looking back at how this process first got going, um, how would you grade the process that continues today? D, as in dog. I like that rating. Uh, the reason is, um, one of the things you may recall is at the beginning they wouldn't let uh, different private equity firms share data with one another. And the problem is this is a $20 billion company. So given that it's this big, you really do need multiple bidders to syndicate the risk. I think that's fair. There's very real risk here. Um, and so there's not a lot of smart guys that are willing to take all that risk. So we ended up with statements coming out of Jerry Yang, who was still employed at the time, saying this will continue yeah. to be a public company, we will sell you know, partial positions. That is not in the best yet that is not in the best interest of public shareholders. They should sell right. the Asian assets for kind of ten to thirteen 
and then the rest should be a bidding war between smart private equity guys that think that under the cover of a private company they can right. make tough decisions and give All the right. money to publish their homes. Laura, we got to leave it there, but great to get your perspectives. Laura Martin of Needham Company joining us via Skype from Pasadena, California.